Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to do like a quick little video before I ended up actually leaving the country and possibly not having the ability to upload videos. Uh, I mean, I will. I'm sh Europe has internet. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying like I'll be traveling so much in the next couple days. Um, but I thought since before I'm going to leave, I'm leaving in like a couple hours, so this will seeming why I'm rushed at the moment. Um, I packed up a bunch of quad stuff. This was originally going to be a car trip specifically, and I was like, I'm going to bring quad stuff for sure. And then I was like, obviously I need to meet up with people and do some quad things, but deciding on what I was gonna bring, cause I have to pack kind of light, it's a small vehicle and there's no trunk. Um, there is, but it's got a fuel cell in there. So anyways, um, yeah, previous video, I'm going to Europe. I'll be gone for like two, three weeks driving around. And uh, I was like, what am I gonna bring drone wise? So let me just show you what I brought. And I did get cut up by a drone and I'll explain that in a second but I'm gonna try to keep this video fairly short so let me show you what I'm bringing uh, I've got um, and this is these are two analog quads so these are just like my standard freestyle situations with you know FET tech and uh, apex with uh, analog it's got a TBS crossfire or unify and then I'm running tracer and I run v4s on the analog quads just because they're a little lighter and um, this is a digital quad that has tracer and is like more nimble but yeah, so I've got two analog quads and one O3 on Tracer. And the reasoning behind that and why I'm not bringing a long range quad, I'll get to in a moment, but I did bring a little bit bigger battery. So I'll just go over the rest of my kit. Analog goggles, got some DJI mics here, got my Mambo. I'll bring my DJI goggles, some tools, extra parts, some props, battery bag, you know, like six or eight one 1300s or sorry 1100s and a couple 1300s and then i've got some goggle batteries battery checker and some analog goggle batteries here um then some whatever these like dji action twos a couple sets of gopros i got a mavic mini pro 4 mini 4 pro chest cam uh i'm probably not going to bring my chesty just because uh, i'm going to be running gun kind of and i don't know if i'll use it i may bring it it's just it's just a fairly large piece i guess i could stuff some stuff in it but yeah maybe not on this trip battery checker and i'm gonna bring one of these ethics chargers with this balance board but other than that yeah that's all i'm bringing as far as drone stuff and then i have a bunch of other things like this camera the zve1 sony and i've got a insta 360 like 4x or x4 or whatever just a bunch of random gear i'm trying to like squeeze it all into two bags i got a carry on well both carry ons but yeah a lot of a lot of clothing, not really, but you know, six or so changes of clothing, and then random stuff here and there, like toiletries and um, some other car-oriented camera gear, like some suction cups and stuff. But anyways, like I was like, wow, I was like, I was like, I wanted to specifically fly some long-range stuff at the Alps because I think RC Shims sent me a video, and I've had a couple guys that are like, oh, I live in this, you know, Switzerland, or I live in Austria, and the mountains are amazing here. Like, you should come fly them, or they, maybe they're not even ask me to fly them, they're just showing me, and I'm like getting super jealous about how amazing it is, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna bring this long range quad, I got this Everest quad that I built. This one, which is a seven inch Apex. Um, it has normal, like regular DJI, like the first gen, and then here's my five and a half inch that's got regular DJI in it. Anyways, long story short, I had another O3 quad, and I'm like, oh, I wanna put O3 in it, so I ripped that thing apart, and then I realized that the plates are slightly different because that's a dead cat and that one was not a dead cat and it didn't work. So I put that quad back together in frustration and I was like, you know what, I'll just rock it like this. Plugged it in, like that's that was the backup quad. So I had two, I sold the original Everest quad. The backup quad is just like not, it, it, it worked, but it was like a backup, more just to scavenge parts off of. It's always flown and worked, but there's always like one quad that's better than the other. <laughs> Um, always for whatever reason I don't know if it's a lottery of something but lottery of silicone but that quad has always given me a little bit of issues and I turn it on armed it nothing armed I did it I did it on the control or on the computer everything worked didn't work plugged it in put props on it or sorry it did work on the computer plugged it in put it on the ground it didn't arm I picked it up left the controller over there put the put the quad right here and it was on with props on but the controller's over there, so like, you know, nothing should go wrong. In my head, I'm like, something's gonna happen. Moments later, rear right motor, full throttle, 
flips over here just for a split second, catches my hand, a couple deep cuts, like they're super glued right now. These two on the, I guess on the upper part of your screen are a little deeper, but since I super glued it and did everything um, the way that I did it, I kept my hand like this the whole time and the cuts basically stayed. I didn't really bleed much and the cuts that are deep, not so bad. And it missed a vein, so we're good. Anyways, but yeah, that was kind of a really frustrating effect that I'm like trying to pack all this stuff, getting all this gear ready and then that happens. So I guess the moral of that story is, is if someone is in along this trip that I'm about to do where I go from Finland to Stockholm to um, uh, Copenhagen down to Hamburg and over to Spa, Spa and do track days at Spa and then go to the Nürburgring for three days and then go to Stuttgart and then Munich and then into Austria to hang out with one of my idols slash business partners to do the coolest thing that I've always wanted to do in FPV since day one what got me into FPV um, doing some like yeah long range with not a mini quad and in a very specific area and a very specific YouTube channel I don't give anything away but the, some people may know what I'm talking about but yeah we're gonna be doing some some proximity tandem like sick I'm excited so anyways uh, that'll be a cool surprise later in the trip and after that going to another thing in Austria and then all the way through the Alps to try to hit like the Stelvio Pass and the Furka Pass and things if they are open. Uh, I don't know if some of the passes in the Alps are open currently, but hopefully they are. And when I get there in like a month or it's 20 days or so, and then over to Zurich and then up to Amsterdam and I'll finish in Amsterdam. And I realize that some of this trip is a little tighter than other parts of the trip. So like in the first half, I'm hoping to just like meet up with a few people in Helsinki in a couple days, like on the the 6th or the 7th, I think it's the 7th because we land on the 6th and then I leave eventually on the evening of the 7th and then uh, I think Stockholm's a bust, Copenhagen maybe a bust but Hamburg maybe good and then at the Nürburgring if people from that general area want to you know pick a place and I'll go because I'm going to be there three or four days so I'll have time to leave and not actually go to the ring and then uh, Stockholm, sorry Stuttgart I'll be there for at least two days so Stuttgart's a good place too and I'm sorry like if you are close to these areas but you're kind of far away I don't want to I'm not asking you to commute or anything I'm just being realistic that all of this you know timing and I had a lot of people reach out and I tried to reply to everybody it's very difficult to like coordinate all of this overseas and like pick a pick pick a place and a time because I just don't know I'm gonna be driving six six hours a day for the most part and I just don't know where I'm gonna be at exactly what time and people are like hey I live two hours away so I'm just gonna pick a couple places and if it's a little further away I'm sorry um, so yeah we'll try to make that work and yeah other than that I'll say some places a couple, maybe a day or so before and if you come out that'd be amazing if you want to fly that's sick too um, but along that trip if somebody's got a seven inch quad that's like a tried and true method I know there's a couple guys that just do this stuff all the time I'm more of a freestyle like you know I do commercial work with drones but my freestyle quads are like the ones that I use all the time so those are the ones that I know best the seven inch stuff I know fairly well and I'm obviously just extrapolating from that into like a more efficient rig and then trying to make it fly well and also be efficient and strapping a big battery to it but I'm sure there are people that just have much better situation set up so if you want to like sell me a brand new rig or something like that to do some like long range alpi stuff with that would be rad so you can just get in touch with me on like instagram or something but other than that um yeah i've i'll be putting some videos documenting this trip on this channel and the other channel the mr steel drives channel and instagram so i'll be on back book back and forth i do all of my social media i have since day one um, except the ethics Instagram I've always kind of had friends of mine run that I ran it in the beginning and it just got too much because I have multiple Instagrams and it's just so much um, but yeah a good buddy of mine uh, Peter runs that so yes if you want to hit me up and you know Instagram is the way to do it um, but I'm gonna be putting stuff on both channels the mr. steel drives and the mr. steel channel so FPV stuff on this channel and then car stuff on the other channel. And I'm about to upload a video on the Mr. Steel Drive channel to kind of explain a little bit more about this trip. 
before I actually go on it so that while I'm on it, if I'm not uploading regularly, you have an idea what's going on because I think that's kind of the coolest part. I hate like getting crazy amounts of footage and then like having to edit it all when I get home, like a month's worth of footage and then editing it all, that sounds like a nightmare. So I'm just gonna try to hammer it out as we go. So anyways, out of breath. I only have a couple hours to fully pack up and get ready. I wanted to leave this stuff out so that I can make a video for you. I hope to see you guys in Europe if you're over there. Um, and the people that aren't in Europe and in other places in the world, I'm sure I will come to your neck of the woods at some point in the future. And if you're just along for the ride, then I appreciate you guys watching me. I uh, literally make nothing off of YouTube. Like people ask me all the time, oh, you must make crazy money off of YouTube. My YouTube ad revenue is like $200 a month and I have 500,000 subscribers, which is insane. I just don't advertise, I don't monetize. I do monetize, but it's like so little, I might as well turn it off. Um, and yeah, I don't do commercials on my channel. If you've ever noticed, I've never done a commercial ever where I've like stopped the video and done a commercial. So that's just a pet peeve of mine. I hate YouTubers and I totally get it because they have to pay the revenue, but the revenue, they have to pay their bills and that's the only way to do it. Or not the only way, but a way to do it. But I just hate ads. So moral of the story is I hope you guys watch and it's more just for you guys to enjoy and for me to like document my life and having fun. So thank you for following me along this crazy journey that will still continue hopefully. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll be in Europe. So bye 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 bye. <laughs>